All right, so this one over here, again, it's a 19th problem. So, I mean, I'm getting a little better at each time when I practice a problem. And, and, and that's, that's what hope the point of practice is get better at something. So I'm going to square the left side. You get x squared. That's pretty simple. On the end, you get 1 16th. I'm sorry, you get a 16th. 1 16th. Oh, I'm sorry, 1 over 16. On the left side, I didn't do the middle term yet. Minus 3x. Now, what would the middle term be? It would be, you know, 1 quarter plus 1 quarter, which is half of an x. All right? What I'm going to do now is multiply both sides by 16. All right, what's 16 times a half? It's going to be 8x. What's 16 times 1 16th? It's just simply 1. Then when you get here, you get minus 48x. All right? So let's just take a moment to pause and see how things are going. Squaring x squared. You know, 1 quarter plus 1 quarter is 2 quarters, which is a half. And 1 quarter times 1 quarter is the 16th. We get minus 3x. If you multiply by 16x squared, I'm sorry, if you multiply by 16, you get 16x squared. A half times 16 is 8. A half times 1 16 is 1. And 16 times minus 3 is minus 48. I think you're going okay. Let me write this down now for you. 16x squared. I want to get a zero now. And what do you get there? You get, let's see, if you think about it, you're adding 48 to both sides, and that's going to give you 56. Okay? Let's keep going. Plus 1 equals 0. Now, someone can say, what are you going to do about this? And there's many things you could do. I'm not saying you can't. Like, for example, you could um, you know, do trial and error. Uh, you could do the AC rule. You could do quadratic formula. I'm going to try to do complete and square, but I want to point out the reason it may seem so difficult is this guy over here. So what I want to do is I want to tell you what perfect squares look like. And I'll write this over here where the coefficient would not be 1. What would this look like? It would look like a squared x squared plus 2abx plus b squared. And what I'm going to claim over here, I'm really just looking at these two guys over here. And looking at it, I'm going to say it looks like the a, just looking at this, the a would be 4. Right? I got that part done. Right? I don't know what the b is, though. But I'm going to write down the b, which I notice is, and again, we're looking at the problem, is 56. I shouldn't say the b. The coefficient here is 56. What's that equal to? 2 times a times b. All right? Do I know what a is? It's 4. Let's write this down. 56 equals 2 times 4 times b. I think I can determine b now. How do you do that? 8 into 56. Well, let's see. That goes in um, 7 times, right? Yeah, b7. All right? So then someone goes, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to write this down now. It's going to be 16x squared plus 56x. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And to complete the square, I actually have to add b squared to both sides. So I actually have to add 49 to both sides. All right? Now again, if this is something you feel uncomfortable doing, it's something you wouldn't be doing. What would you be doing... I don't know, maybe even something as drastic as using a quadratic formula. There's nothing wrong with that. You could do that. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm, I complete the square, and um, I'm going to erase this business over here. Now, maybe I'll keep it there. Perfect square. What's it going to be? 4x. I'm still looking at this, by the way, because the a is 4. Plus b. What's b? b was 7 squared. What do you get on the right side? You get 48. What do you get over here? 4x plus 7 equals plus or minus the square root of 48. All right? So I want to do something on the side for you. The square root of 48 is um, 16 times 3. That's 48. And the square root of 48 would be 4 root 3. Let me write this over here for you. 4x plus 7 equals 4. I'm sorry, plus or minus 4 root 3. What do you get over here? Take 7 from both sides. You get minus 7 
plus or minus 4 root 3, right? And then what are you going to do? Divide both sides by 4. And write that down. You're going to get x equals minus 7 plus or minus 4 root 3 over 4. I'm going to say this is an answer. The answer I would write down, again, looking at multiple times, I think they write something down different. But I still want to look at the k. And I want to see if I got that answer. And I'm seeing that over here. What am I seeing? A, a, a quotient, certainly. Uh, divisor of 4. And uh, let's see, minus 7 plus or minus. Yeah, we did okay. But again, remember, they may rewrite these differently in multiple choice exams by factoring a minus 1. If I did that, let me do it up here first now. x, if I factor out minus 1, what do you get? 7 minus plus 4 root 3 over 4. Sorry about jamming that in. Let's write that down. 7 minus 4 root 3 over 4. 7 plus 4 root 3 over 4. All right, we completed the square in that one. So what are we doing over here? Basically, uh, we got that, and I see those answers being listed over here. All right, thank you.